functioning correctly in your brain. The question is, what? Hello friends, welcome to my chaos corner of the world. My name is Echo, just in case you're new here. This video is actually sponsored by Literity, which I think I'm saying right. Okay, so I've been told that it's actually pronounced literati? Literati. Literati. So there we go. That's how it's actually said. A monthly subscription box, but for books. So growing up, I was in special ed, specifically for dyslexia. The main effect that I've noticed from my dyslexia is actually that I have a really difficult time spelling. It took me maybe two years to figure out how many R's are in the word very and how many t's are in the word pretty i think the only reason my writing looks halfway coherent at this point is because of spell check technology assistance hooray my experience with special ed is hopefully not super common because it was not a good experience where i went to school our special education was essentially just an extra classroom that you could go to if you had any difficulty understanding certain material in your other classes. However, they did not help by explaining what it was that you were having difficulty learning. Instead, they would just give you the answers so that you could pass, which drove me up a wall because that is not a special education. I almost never went to the special ed room because they really did not help me with what I needed help with. My dyslexia is pretty bad. It does affect my reading. I really don't get as much pleasure out of reading as a lot of other people do, specifically with fiction. When I was going to school, the only time that I ever read something that was a story was because I had to do homework about it. I do enjoy reading to a degree, but I'm the kind of person who wants to read factual information. I've read textbooks for fun because I like learning. And I think part of that stems from my desire to be productive. When I read nonfiction, I feel like I'm learning, whereas when I read fiction, it feels like the only value I'm getting out of it is supposed to be entertainment. The entertainment value that I got from storybooks was less than the work that I had to put in to read the book from cover to cover as a dyslexic person. And I know that's a perspective that I have that should change because you can learn a lot from stories. Fiction can be educational and productive while also giving you the entertainment value. So my hope in partnering with Literity is that this will give me more of a drive and purpose to read fiction. I really do like their boxes. Their package design is really nice. Kudos to their graphic designer. So when you get your Literity book club box for the month, it will have the book that everyone is reading for that month and then also a bookmark so that you can keep your place and a pack with a book guide and notes from your luminary who is the person that curated all of the books that are in this reading list. And different luminaries or um, like leaders of your book club group will have different specialities. Authors, activists, and artists who host their 12 book clubs. The book club that I'm taking part in is curated by Roxane Gay, who is, I believe, an activist, but she's also a New York Times bestselling author. I know that for sure. Roxane Gay is a cultural critic, author, and professor. So I actually chose her book club because I feel like she cares about a lot of the same social issues I care about. So this is from her book club page, the Audacious Book Club. Get ready for Audacious writing, books that boldly disregard normal restraints. Writers who risk it all on the page to tell compelling stories with brutal honesty, vulnerability, and wit. This is a book club that understands that diversity is not only skin deep. You'll read work from writers of color, queer writers, women writers, and much more, but you will also read work from an eclectic range of perspectives. However, I think I'm going to try the Read Like an Artist book club by Austin Cleon. As far as other book clubs you might be interested in, there's the Myth and Meaning book club, which is organized by the Joseph Campbell Foundation, the Fearless book club, which is curated by Nobel Prize laureate Malala, or maybe even the Finding Wonder book club, which is organized by Atlas Obscura, an award-winning media and travel company. Oh, I just realized they also do book clubs for kids. That's cool. I'm actually just going to put their book club descriptions right here, so you can pause the video or take a screenshot if you want and then decide which one would be best for you. Membership includes access to all Literity book clubs. You can choose a new book club every month and switch clubs at any time. Membership includes access to all Literity book clubs. It looks like there are two membership options. They're standard and premium. With the premium option, which is what I have, you get a book delivered every month, access to the app, and monthly pricing. With the standard option, you just bring your own book and then you get access to the app, all of the book clubs, and members are able to purchase any book for up to 60% off of the original price. Each luminary curates their book club around a topic, cause, or concept that they care deeply about. So depending on 
what cause you're most interested in, you can choose which luminary you might like. Or just go to their website, that's another thing you can do. Then you get pictures. The special education at my high school was absolutely horrible. I'm sure I'm not the only one who had this kind of experience too, because education in America is extremely underfunded, especially with public education. Before teaching special ed, our special ed teacher came from teaching kindergartners, and she would tend to treat us with the same demeanor, which felt incredibly condescending. I was young, but I wasn't a child, and I wanted to be treated with a little bit more respect. I grew up very quickly which essentially just means that, you know, my childhood wasn't a piece of cake. And I guess because of that, I felt like I deserved a little more respect than a kindergartner. And there were probably some kids in the special education group who did need to be treated with that kind of gentle helicoptering. But to me, it came off as incredibly condescending and I was not a fan. One of the good things that did come out of being in the special ed program was that I was allowed to use my phone for spell checking essay questions. I was allowed to use something that I would, of course, in the real world, almost always have access to, almost like a disability aid. So at this point, I'm gonna go through and read a couple chapters and then maybe give a bit of a summary and kind of tell you what I think so far. I missed this one chunk of hair. That's better. The Five Wounds by Kirsten Valdez Quaid. I think that's how you say it. I don't know how long these chapters are. We're gonna see. Part one, Semana Santa. This year, Amadeo Padilla is Jesus. The hermanos have been preparing in the dirt yard behind the Morada. So because I grew up in a Hispanic household, I can actually pronounce and relate to a lot of this. So I'm kind of glad this is the book that I'm doing this video with because I'm not gonna butcher it as bad as I might other books. Today, Amadeo woke with the idea of studying the cross with nails to give it extra weight. Do you see how when I'm reading, I have these like momentary pauses? It's because instead of just smoothly processing all of the text, my brain has to stop and start over. It's like my brain is glitching. That's what dyslexia is like for me. So reading out loud actually kind of helps because I'm not going over sentences again and again and again. He holds the hammer with both hands high above his head, brings it down with a crack, the boards bounce. 33 years old, same as our Lord, but Amadeo is not a man of, with ambition. So the story opens with a man named Amadeo Padilla, who is playing Jesus in a reenactment being done by a small town called Las Benas. I think I'm saying that right. I grew up in a Hispanic household, so a lot of this feels very familiar. When Amadeo pulls up the gravel drive to the house, his daughter Angel is sitting on the steps, eight months pregnant. Let's say he's 33 and became a dad at 18. Then his daughter would be 15 and pregnant, and he is about to be a grandfather at the age of about 34. Her birthday is this week, falls on Good Friday, she'll be 16. See? I guessed right, she's about 16. The power of math. Uh, this last week was the most important week in Jesus's life. I feel like I should be pronouncing Jesus Jesus because this is meant to be from either like a Hispanic or Latin American context. She's got a big gold purse with her and a duffel bag he sees courtesy of Marlboro, my grandmother's brand of cigarettes. Amadeo is a 33 year old man who had a daughter when he was a teenager who is now also having a teen pregnancy. And it looks like she got in a fight with her mother so instead she is trying to go live with Amadeo and his mother, her grandmother, but her grandmother has gone to Vegas for the week. Something to do with the legislative session, which makes me wonder if she works in politics. This reminds me of both my older sister and my uncle and my grandmother. My grandmother's house was like the central hub of our family. I used to tell her that if our family was a solar system, she would be the sun because if anything happened to her, everything else would just float out into space. Amadeo sits at the other end of the couch, strangely nervous. He tries to remember the last time he was alone with his daughter, but can't. Two or three Christmases ago, maybe, he remembers sitting awkwardly in the same room asking Angel about her favorite subjects while Yolanda was at the grocery store for the neighbors. I believe Yolanda's the grandma's name. All of these are very Hispanic names. Amadeo wonders if Marissa acted this young back then. Marissa was 16, Amadeo 18, but they felt old. Her parents had been angry and ashamed, but had thrown a baby shower for the young couple anyway. Amadeo had enjoyed being the center of things, congratulated by her relatives and his, handed tamales and bizcochitos on paper plates by old women who were willing to forgive everything in exchange for a church wedding. This sounds so much like my family! <laughs> Later, of course, there was no wedding, no moving in together. 
Angel was born and learned to walk and talk with no help from Amadeo. Oh, so he's a father. So most likely because this takes place in New Mexico, I grew up in Arizona, this is probably a Mexican family. Every night of Lent, yeah, they're definitely Catholic. So this is definitely a Mexican family. His initiation and first audience with the hermanos took place five weeks ago on Ash Wednesday. Divya reached into the breast pocket of his flannel shirt and handed Amadeo a folded notebook paper. Amadeo squinted the unsteady block letters that had been copied out with a blunt pencil. Oh wait, this is in Spanish, Amadeo said. You could do a much better job with English, Amadeo offered. Oh, that's relatable. <laughs> I too never learned Spanish. Apparently when my younger sister and I were really, really little, we used to speak Spanglish, but then as we got older, the Spanish part of our language just slowly dissipated, and now neither of us can speak Spanish. Which is such a sad thing. When I was a kid and a teenager, I was trying very hard to hide and repress the Hispanic side of my life because I wanted to fit in and be normal. And now I regret it because now that I'm older, I feel like I've just completely lost touch with certain aspects of that side of my life. Embrace your culture. Don't be ashamed of it. It makes you more unique and it connects you with your ancestry and your past and who you are as a person. Way more than I realized it did. There were practical reasons for the sales. The three vertical cuts that were going to be made on his back. On the morning of Ash Wednesday, though, his courage began to fail. Now, finally, Diva crosses himself. All right, he says it irritably. Amen. Amadeo stands. The hermanos gather, gather themselves. Buddy, he says Al Martinez in the doorway, clapping a hand on Tio Tevez's skinny shoulder. Isaiah, my youngest, wants to join us. He wants to be an hermano. Uh, he'd be a great candidate. He wants to get back to his history. No more novicitos. Novicitos. I want to say novicitos, which is like, oh, novicito, little, little novice. No more novicios. But Tive, he's a good boy, a manager at Lowe's. No, says Tive, it's not the right time. At 6.30 in the morning on Holy Wednesday, Amadeo wakes to the gurgle of a hiss of pipes in the wall near his head. He flops over on his limp bed, tries not to think about Angel. When he wakes, it's after 10. The house is stunningly empty. He eats the cold eggs and bank. An angel left out for him, and then because that jumpy, awful feeling won't go away, he cracks open a beer. That's the first chapter. That took me over an hour to read 16 pages. I read very slowly because of my dyslexia. The bookmark for this month says write down your favorite line from this month's book, and I have a sneaking suspicion it's gonna be the one where he's describing the poem about the butterfly. Amadeo had a flash to his fifth grade language arts textbook and a long rhyming poem about a bu butterfly, whispering the words in his room, enjoying the rhyme, the inevitability of the sound. Sky, I, why, stupid as f It's just incredible. There's a lot of really beautiful subtleties in this first chapter, and I imagine in this entire book that really capture what it's like to be be a Hispanic American. I can see my family in these pages. The cool thing about the Literati book clubs is that there's actually a Literati app, so you can talk to people who are also reading the thing that you are reading. That's what a book club is. But one of the really cool things about the app is that you can actually track how far into the book you are. So for example, we just read 16 pages, and that is a whopping 3%. I am an atrociously slow reader. Another really nice thing about the app is that the discussion discussions are broken up by page count, so you can engage with discussions based on how far into the book you are. It also means that if you're a fast reader, you can just talk to other fast readers while you wait for the people like me to catch up, which is pretty dang cool. This is what I ended up writing in the first section of our book club, as well as some of the interesting comments. I am a very slow reader, and so having the app broken up into sections that I can engage with at my own pace is very nice. I don't have to feel stressed about reading it as fast as I can to make sure that I'm on pace with everyone else. I can go at my own snail speed. I feel like this is the kind of thing that Hank Green would be really into. I know that I should be reading because reading makes you better at reading. It's just a little bit harder for me because of my dyslexia. So if you want to join a book club with me, you can get literity. I'll be there. Oof, let's stop sinking down in your chair. This is going to be such a big video to edit. I've never done a read along before. I hope you like this video. It's a little bit outside of my normal content. But let's be real. This channel is chaos. It's just whatever I I feel like doing because that's how I want to live my life because it's my channel and my face and my camera and my time and this is what I want to do. What is the point of being a YouTuber if you're not doing what you want to do? Isn't that like the whole point? But that's all I've got for you right now. I'm gonna give you 2,000 awesome points for making it all the way to the end of this video because this was a weird one. I can't promise thematically consistent content but if you want to see my face more you can click this button 
here. Or if you might want to see some of the other types of videos that I do, you can click somewhere over here. Okay, I'm gonna go. You have a wonderful day. I'm gonna edit hours and hours of footage. Cool, we're done here. We're done. You're done. Goodbye. Check out my shirt, limited edition.